Welcome to I Love Stocks. Please remind yourself to subscribe and ring that bell to our YouTube channel. We also have a Twitter page right here. If you subscribe to that, we post daily updates in that. And also we have our uh, stock twits links. Hit that. We have Pinterest and we have a little store up here if you want to buy some merchandise. But this is our website here. And if you ever want to join the chat service, you just got to hit this button right here. And there's the instructions on how to how to join the chat room. We do offer one free week. So let's go ahead and jump right into Tesla. You know, Tesla is one of my favorite trades of the year. It's been for the last 10 years. I've been bullish on this stock ever since the IPO came out. I just wanted something different in the auto industry. I wasn't too satisfied with what what happened with General Motors. They've been, you know, what they've had to have been bailed out three different times. They're just mismanaged. And we just needed something new. And when Tesla came out, that really excited my my boat, you know. And so let's let's go right into the uh, news and see if we find any news. It did close at 9.01 on Friday. We did have a real bad red day. The market closed down at 227 points on the Dow, which wasn't a good sign, but that was two straight days of a pretty bad sell-off. But Tesla held its own. And always remember, this is my bullish bear trade of the year. And I'm adding space also to that SPCE as my bullish bearish trade. More on the speculative side of SPCE than I am, you know, with the fundamentals that Tesla has does outdo the stock. But space is a little cheaper and it sure was a bullish trade last week. So let's go ahead and look at some news here, see if I can find anything that really excites me. There was one headline that came out that the bears kind of didn't like, and that was the German court says Tesla can clear trees at the site for the new plant that they're building in Germany. So they're building that right now. They're cutting them trees down. They're gonna have some firewood. And I wouldn't doubt it, you know, maybe around the corner that Oh, Elon Musk might get a little hair up as you know what and say, hey, let's go plant some trees somewhere. I do admire Elon Musk, and so do I admire Richard Branson that has uh, Virgin Galactica. And I'm really bullish bearish on this trade too, more of the bear side, but run with the bulls. Long term, I'm definitely bullish, but it's going to be a different kind of play. Right now, it's speculative, and there is no fundamentals behind the earnings are coming out here next week so this is one that we're going to be watching i'll probably pay the knife play the knife on it and but we've kind of consolidated after the big run and that's pretty good let's see what else i can find down here there was some another headline that i do want to bring up oh look at here there is now a hot wheel version of tesla Cybertruck. that was a big catalyst for this stock to run too it did dip off the news and there was another, oh, here's another one here. Consumer Reports picks the top cars and ranks them by price. I wonder what that was. Tesla on top of the list with Toyota models. I like the Toyota too. I, you know, but I, I definitely want to get me, if I can get this Tesla Cybertruck to tow my camper that I'm going to be getting in a couple of years when I retire, I would think that would be a wonderful combination having that Tesla be towing that their cyber car across the country. And maybe some of these KOA camps or these campsites will have these charging stations that I think is going to be linked up with Blink, maybe, B-L-N-K. But that's another thing that's got a big boost with Tesla is they're, they're planning ahead. I think they're going to build a lot of these charging stations throughout the country, and there's going to be tons of them. You know, you won't have to travel 200 miles to get to one travel every 50 miles or every city will have one every hotel might have one who knows you know but i think that's part of the plan and we do have battery coming up battery month coming up here in april so that's going to be another catalyst for tesla to run i'm um, going to see if we got any more news in here that tickles my feathers on tesla Oh, hedge fund investors has beaten Warren Buffett by 200 times likely made to the killing on Tesla. You know, I remember messaging, trying to get a hold of Buffett through a message of somehow 
and he never did get it or he never received it or he was just bearish on Tesla back when it was at $100. I said, man, you've got to get this, put a billion dollars in this company. I mean, what is that to you? That's chump change. He just didn't do it. Now he's having regrets. He, he says he wouldn't buy the stock here, nor if he was in it, he said he would sell the stock here. So it's definitely bullish in my book. And that's Tesla. Love Tesla. Tesla, Tesla. So let's go ahead and go straight to the chart and tell you how a person can trade it on a small account. We've had 176, 177 down here at the beginning of last year, right around 6'4 of 2019. And we've had nothing and run up to the 200, pulled back, consolidated for about three months. Never did want to break that resistance there at 257. Then that cyber truck came out right about in here. And um, you know what happened. They busted that windshield and kind of cracked and kind of brought that stock down. But then earnings came out and we had a big gap up. This was the day that should have woke everybody up right around 294. And I was yelling in the room. I said, this is going higher. This is going higher. The momentum's here. This is the break we needed. And she ran all the way up to $968.99. We had a target of one grand. So this is how I kind of looked at Tesla. Let's pull up the 20-day or the 10-day. Uh, let's pull up the 5-day, five 5-minute. Five and we had that huge run last, uh, was it Wednesday, where it ran all the way back up to that 944. And I was saying it's time to be bearish on the trade again. It's going to dip on down. The bears are going to attack it. Well, they did that next Thursday. And I'm going to pull up the Thursday chart. And I was drawing these trend lines. Let me pull this back here. You know, I was drawing these trend lines. We had that ascending triangle right in here. Ascending triangle is when you have lower, higher lows. And then you have like a, a, a resistance level. And that resistance was at 857.26. And then right into close, you can see it started breaking that ascending triangle. And let me draw that up for you. Just kind of, so for the ones that doesn't know what an ascending triangle, it's always good to, to know what I'm talking about. It's a little like that. And you, you can kind of see it from here to here. And I would have called the squeeze if I was if I was talking, well, I probably was talking about the ascending triangle this day, and then she just ran up after hours and just kept going pre-market. Then I started drawing these support lines, saying I might want to use these a little bit later, and then we had the break up to 9:44, and I think after the week before the video I did, I said we had a resistance right around the um, it was 8:13 level. And then last week we had another, I said we were going to probably break out from that and create a new channel, but, well, man, we had a couple real nice days last week. She did break out Monday, kind of pulled back, and then you could see this big bounce that we had into that ascending triangle right here. That's just a beautiful, beautiful trade right there. Just beautiful. I mean, if you were following the momentum, you could have got in this and scalped it on an option and then maybe sold it up at, well, not here. Pre-market, you couldn't have. But, you know, you could have got in here if you had the money and scalped it all the way up and watched that run and wait for the pullback. Well, we had a little pullback, and the higher lows kept coming in, and then we had that big breakout here. So I was drawing these resistance lines on it Thursday, trying to figure, okay, we had that big sell-off here and just kept coming down, coming down, coming down. And I had a trend line that I started. We'll go back to this 10-day chart that I started from right down here and hit it right there. And that trend line just kind of kept going on up for the next couple of days. Well, that trend line come into some good use later down the line Friday. And I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. And this is, you know, I've been trading for 15 years, but I kind of, something clicked last week about, I watched this one guy on stock twits that has these crazy lines all over his chart. And I think I'm kind of seeing what he might be seeing on it. And I want to thank that man. Open up my eyes a little bit. I kind of compared him with my existing trend lines and my patterns and kind of made fun of him. But then something clicked last week. So we run up to 944 and then we pulled back that next day. And let me go ahead and pull this back to the five minute. 
let me span this. This was like a solid resistance line right here, solid support line right here at 8.9306. You can see we touched down a couple of times. And we found resistance a couple of times, and then we broke out of that. And then we pulled back here after hours, which kind of made to me a solid support level or maybe a resistance level into the next day. And I also did the same thing with the trend line at 9.0305 right up here where we stopped and we started to pull back. I thought we were just going to start making a channel in this area right in here between 877 and 910. And that's, the, that's, that's where the stage we're in right now. We're in the channel making stage. It'll be a while before I think we bounce above 1,000. This coronavirus is a major going to have a major effect on the economy. And I think they're kind of taking that. To me, the coronavirus or electing a bad politician will be probably the, the two worst things that could affect the market. So let's go ahead and go into the uh, next day. We're going to bring it up to the three minute. And this is kind of how I played it. We, and I always tell the room, you know, I so I get a drisp of the market the first 15, the first 30, minutes of the trading day or even the first hour well the first 30 minutes we had a sell-off and then we kind of hit a consolidated area right down here at 884.47 and that's where i drew my 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 support levels and we did pull back to that support level later in the day well i jumped right in the trade right at the beginning right here and i'll show you in the one minute i played when i'm scalping or when I'm trading, I like to use the one minute chart. And we got down here and we had that double bottom, but that, that base of that candle never did go below that support line. And that was a good sign to me. And then we've had a couple of these real strong candles that came in, these engulfing candles with very small wicks. So I jumped in this trade right about in here on this one right here. And, and it might have, yeah, it was right at, it was right here. It was right here. No, let me see here. Yeah, it was right here when I jumped in the trade. It went ahead and run up, and then it pulled back to support a level, support level again. I was up a couple hundred dollars on this options call. And let me pull that up. I use Tastyworks. So my first, my first trade on it was here at the February. This is a, a lotto play. For the same day and i traded this three times in the week and this was a lotto play for a small account you know i figured i can get in here with 560 bucks and run it up a couple hundred and she did run up a couple hundred and then she started pulling back and it was it happened so fast that it dipped all the way down to like 300 and i 300 and something three dollars on that option and this was going to expire in the same day so when it started bouncing back up i bought two more of them right here at 390 level which brought my cost down real well and then when within from the first entry of that trade that i made at 846 this was not even a half hour into the day but i knew by this time how the market was going to run on tesla and that i found my real solid support and i knew pretty positive not a hundred percent you never can be but it did pull back to that area so when it pulled back the second time, I got me two contracts, and I end up having three. And then within, after buying that, that those other two at 850, four minutes later, it jumped up to about 545, something like that, 560, and it started dipping on me. And I said, I'm going to go ahead and take my profit here. So within eight minutes, eight and a half to nine minutes, I made $185 just on that trade with about a 13, I think it all had come up to about $1,340 investment. Well, back on, back on, um, let me see how far back I can go here. Back on the 19th, I got in an option call, just a little bit under $1,200, and sold it at $1,285 within, from ten fifty five to eight oh three. So that was within eight minutes I sold that contract. And I made a pretty good little chunk of change on that one. You know, 100 bucks, a little under 100, about 95. Then I got back in it again the same day 
I got in at about 11.38, just a little bit after, and ran it all the way up to 11.49 and got in at 8.25 and sold it at 9.95. So that was kind of an, another $170 trade right there. Very impressed. But that's happened within 10, I'm making these trades within 10 minutes at a time. And trading other trades too at the same time. I'm scalping and I'm watching and I'm talking to the room and but when I'm in a trade, I, I, I've got a kind of a little philosophy. Philosophy: When the market's red, I'm green. There's major reasons behind that because I don't hold a lot of bags, for one. I like to get in and out and take my profit. You know, I'm not, I'll swing a trade overnight. I'll buy it that day and then I'll sell it the next day. But I'm not a bag holder. You know, if that trade ain't working, I'm out. And I'll use that money elsewhere. But... That's why I can I love playing the red market because I'm so good at playing them dips and finding supports and looking for the reversal. You know, I'm not one to jump in at resistance and and hope down the line, you know, 52 week highs or anything like that. Hope maybe next day it'll bounce. I'll play that little pullback and hit it back up to resistance. So there's a couple ways of playing Tesla and we're going to look at this chart one more time. And I want to pull this up, magnify this up to that daily. But it held all the resistances from the previous day. And this was my second scalp that I did on it. From right, It pulled right back to that support level at 884.47. And by this time, I was pretty much going to see a lower high, I thought, or maybe double top. And we did. So but we, I got out right in here and sold that, op, sold that option and made another couple hundred dollars, about 250 on that one. But the thing about it is, like I said, when the coronavirus is kind of weary, you know, kind of on the back burner in my mind every day. So I'm playing with a little bit more caution and and I'm bullish on Tesla and I'm bearish on Tesla. You know, I could have took it and wrote it down for the first 30 minutes, maybe, but I'm just not that fast. Sometimes I can only handle one to two trades at a time. And I just wanted to wait for a confirmation and run it up like a bull would. And when I cost average down again and got out and, and took that money on that trade, I was pretty excited about that. And I, it ran all the way up, you know. It hit my other resistance line. But, you know, I'm fast and I like to get in and out. And she went ahead and pulled on back pretty solid, pretty strong from that 903 area back down to my 884, which gave me another chance. And I always say that I'm not shy to take my profit because you always get another chance. And I don't like to be bullied. You know, I repeat that. I don't like to be bullied when I'm in a trade and I get out early because I know in my heart that I have another chance to make money on it. And so we ran all the way back up again and I made money on it. See, I made more if I'd have, I made more by doing that if I just held it and run it all the way up to here, you know. I made more by, by scalping two trades. And I did the same thing the other day. I made more by waiting for the pullback and doubling my money and, and, and playing it that way. So this is Tesla. Now, how do I think we're going to react Monday? We're going to pull up the five-day. I'm going to look at it. I still think we're going to build a channel in here. We're going to have a real hard resistance right up in here. And let me go ahead and put that right there at 9.7. Whoops. Let's change this dollar sign here. Magnify this up and draw a little trend line there. That's going to be a hard resistance right there at 9.17. We did pull back after hours too, I think I noticed. Let's look at the daily one minute one more time. So we've got a real hard resistance up here at 9.17.31. We're going to try to stay in this channel if we can come Monday. But we did kind of have, you know, a solid support right here. Now the bears are always going to be on this. And you know, these are my moving averages. I use the 9, the 34, and the 200 on a daily. And I also use them as supports and resistances also. And right now, after hours pre-market we've run up here right to around 898 so that's what we're going to be looking at low support is going to be this 884.47 if it pulls back there I don't want to see it go no lower if it does I do have an 8 
7789 area. Like I said, the bears are thinning out, but they're still trying to have a, a, a re revenge trade on it because they still been. I mean, I fought the bears all the way from 50 bucks on this stock, and a lot of and the retailer retail trader right now is the one that's in charge. So we're going to have support level right here at 884. The first one's going to be here at 803. Resistance to break is going to be 90305 up to 10, 91078 to 91731. That's kind of showed you how you can take a small account and still trade Tesla, but you got to learn how to do them options. And I always look for the highest volume of contracts being sold in that day. And that's where I usually put my pot, put my money in. So everybody have a great day. Always remember, we love stocks.